Hi, this is Elijah with the Oxygen team. And in this video, we're going to take a look at how to set up FullPage.js on your Oxygen site. FullPage.js is a JavaScript library that allows you to change the scrolling behavior of your site. As an example, I've set up this page, which has three full height sections and some navigation here on the side. If we use our scroll wheel to scroll down, you'll see that our viewport automatically moves to the next full height section. Our navigation also tracks with whichever section we're in. And we can scroll down again, and you see that effect. If we want to go back up to the top, we can also click this navigation. So it's a really nice effect, and you've probably seen it a lot of other places. And if you're like me, you wondered, how did they do that? Well, fullpage.js is probably the answer to that question. Now, I'm going to include a link to where you can get fullpage.js, but I do want to note that if your project is not open source, you may need to purchase a license. So make sure to check out their licensing information and their pricing. Now, this is actually surprisingly easy to set up, but it is slightly advanced in that there's some JavaScript that needs to be written. I'll provide snippets for all of the code that I use in this video, so you can mostly just copy and paste with maybe a few adjustments here and there. So I'm going to jump into Oxygen Builder with a blank design, and we'll start this thing from scratch. Now, the first thing we're going to want to do here is get our basic structure set up. Before we worry about any code, we want to make sure everything's laid out the way it needs to be in order to work with full page. So one of the requirements of full page is that we wrap all of our sections in a container. So in this case, we're going to use a div. So we'll go to add and grab a div. And we're going to need to change the ID of this element to full page. And then we'll probably just want to go ahead and set the width to 100%. Now we just need to add our sections. So we're going to go to add section. And one of the things we'll need to do to prep these sections for use with full page is to add the class section. Perfect. Now we can go ahead and style these. Now these are of course going to be full height sections. So we'll go to advanced size and spacing and set the height to 100 VH. Now for these sections, much like what you saw in the initial example. I'm going to use uh, svgbackgrounds.com just to grab something that looks kind of nice and will differentiate the sections for us. So I am going to change these to be a little less, uh, less intense here on the colors. Probably just go grayscale with these. Perfect, and we just need to copy this code, go over here, and for this section, we don't want to apply this background to all sections, so we're going to select the ID, go to Advanced, Custom CSS, and just paste that in. Now let's add some kind of element to this, so we'll go to Add, we'll do Columns, we'll do a two-column layout here, and in the left column, I'm going to want a heading of some kind, and we'll just choose from our global colors here, this nice blue. And we'll say this is a full page. And then we'll add some subtext here. Isn't it really nice? Question mark. I think it is, but we'll see. So let's go here and we're going to change the line height here on this. Uh, we can also do this globally, which if I was designing a real website, that would be the first step. One of the first steps is to set up my global styles, which includes setting the global line height, so I don't have to do it for every uh, heading. So there's that. We're going to go ahead and uh, align everything to the middle vertically within this section, because over here, we're going to add an image. So let's do an image, and let's run out to pexels and grab something. Let's search for plants, and let's just grab this. And I'm not going to grab a huge one because I don't need a 4,000 by 3,000 pixel image. Uh, so I'm just going to grab a medium one because we're using it at a relatively small size. Great. And we'll probably just use that image across all our sections uh, in the interest of time because everyone knows how to add an image and to get an image. So we're not going to go into uh, too much detail there. We're going to go ahead and drop that in here. And then just for the sake of making it look nice. Let's add some uh, 
border radius, maybe like 12 pixels. And then we'll go to effects and add a bit of a box shadow. We'll go dark, mostly transparent, no horizontal offset, a little bit of vertical offset. We'll do a big blur to make it a nice soft shadow and then a negative spread. So that's our basic section here. We're also gonna wanna go ahead and align everything to the middle vertically just because these are gonna be full height sections. We want everything to kind of sit in the middle. Uh, one last thing, let's add some bottom margin here. So size and spacing on this heading, bottom margin of eight pixels. That looks all right. Okay, so now let's just duplicate this section a couple of times. One, two, that way we have three full height sections. And then let's alter this image a bit. So we're gonna to go to advanced effects filter and we'll just pick some filters to kind of change these around a little bit so let's make this one grayscale and let's go ahead and let's flip-flop these divs here these uh these columns i should say on the second section so the image is on the left all right and then this one here we will add a different filter advanced effects filter and we're going to go to maybe saturate and let's see if we can like just crank it up a little bit. And then uh, let's go to advanced effects and let's just add a transform and just rotate it by a couple degrees. Perfect. So now we have a bit of differentiation between these sections. Let's also change these uh, the background on the section. So let's go and grab something else from SVG backgrounds. Let's do this one. And of course, we're going to lighten that up quite a lot. Is something very subtle there and go back and on this section here since we have the ID selected we're set we need to go to advanced custom CSS and just replace this with that okay perfect and then we have one more section that I want to change the background image on so let's go back over here and find something else how about this and again gonna change that to mostly white gray scale-ish kind of color just because that's easy and it goes with everything. So we'll go down here, perfect, and then copy that. And we have the section selected with the ID, again, not the class, the ID. Go to Advanced, Custom CSS, and we're gonna paste that new background in and you can see it there. Okay, so let's save that. And let's just jump to the front end and look at what we have. So right now we have section one, section two, section three. Okay, so we have three sections. Each one is the full height of the viewport. And now we wanna make these uh, scroll with full page. So let's jump back over here and we're gonna go up and select the body and we're gonna add a code block. Drop that in. Let's put it up at the top. I like to put these where they're easy to find so you don't have to go tracking down code blocks later. Uh, and I like to name them appropriately. So I'm gonna rename this to full page. This is basically our engine that drives everything that's happening on this page. So let's get rid of that PHP and we're gonna paste in a, the script from a CDN. So a CDN is a content delivery network. That's gonna be mostly your best way to drop in scripts like full page. Now, some folks may wanna download and host this themselves. That's fine. For this example, we're just gonna use a CDN to get this thing going quickly. So that's all we need in the PHP and HTML section. Let's jump over to uh, JavaScript, which is where the magic really happens and I'm going to paste in this code and then we'll kind of walk through what we're doing here. So we're using a jQuery document ready right here to make sure that everything's loaded before we fire any of this full page stuff. I find that most of the time when something's not working with some jQuery I've added in a code block, it's because I didn't wrap it in a document dot ready. So make sure to remember to do that. Now, what we're doing here is we're creating a new full page instance. We're passing it this ID full page, which is the ID we added to this wrapper div. So that lets full page know which wrapper we're using. And then here are all the options. So we have auto scrolling, 
scroll horizontally, which is there because full page allows you to have subsections that uh, you scroll down to the section and then when you scroll, it scrolls horizontally like a slider, which we're not using here, but the option exists and there are a ton more options than what I have here actually. Uh, anchors, so these are important for our navigation that's gonna flow along the right hand side. Um, these help us to identify the sections and then apply styles to the appropriate link. So you'll wanna probably use these same uh, first page, second page, third page anchors just for simplicity. And we have lock anchors false, which basically determines whether full page is paying attention to the anchors in the URL or not, which in this case, we don't need to lock the anchors. Menu, this is the ID of the menu element we're gonna create. So we'll come back and adjust this uh, once we have that. And then after load, so this is where we're looking at which section is loaded on the screen, and then we're adjusting the anchor so that we can highlight the active link on that sidebar navigation. And we actually don't need this console log, so I'm gonna remove that. And then within this after load option, we're running a function which has anchor link and index parameters, and then we're going to jQuery and selecting the full page dash anchor, which is the class we're gonna use for the navigation links and we're removing the class anchor active which will go ahead and remove it from all of them then we're finding the one with a URL that's equal to the anchor that we're now on after loading the next section and then we're adding the class anchor active so that lets us basically control the way those links look in relation to which section we're on and then down here we're setting allow scrolling true because obviously we want to be able to scroll and that's pretty much it for the javascript there's a bit of css as well so we'll go back to primary go to css and this is just going to be the styles for the active links on the right hand side so now we've basically got everything set up now i'm not a hundred percent positive that this is going to throw a fit if we jump in here Yep, that looks pretty good. Though we have lost our vertical alignment, so we'll have to go back in and adjust that. So right now I'm scrolling down one tick on my scroll wheel and it's just scrolling all the way to the next section. So if this is all you wanted, just a useful page to scroll between sections, you're pretty much done. But for this example, I want the navigation on the right hand side too. So we're gonna need to add that. So let's collapse this editor and we're going to add another div and this is gonna be our navigation wrapper. Now, one thing we wanna do is we wanna grab the ID of this, and we're gonna to wanna to go back to our JavaScript and make sure that ID is here in the menu option. Leave your hashtag and just paste in that new ID. And then we're gonna collapse this again, actually apply, collapse. And then we can go over and style this uh, navigation. So we need to go to advanced, layout and set it to position fixed because we want it to just float there on the right side of the screen. We're gonna set it to top zero, right 32, so it's not just right up against the right side of the screen. And then we're gonna set it to Z index of like a thousand to put it on top of everything. And then we're gonna to go to advanced size and spacing and set it to 100 VH to make it full height go back to primary, and we're just gonna wanna center everything in the middle. Now we just need to add our links. So we need to add a link wrapper. That's all we're using here. You can use any link element, but I like to use the link wrapper if I just need something that doesn't contain any text, but is clickable. So we're gonna click that. And then we're gonna add a class to style this because we want all of our link wrappers to look the same. So let's add a class called full page dash anchor. And then let's style this up a bit. So we're gonna do a uh, slightly transparent gray background. We might need to change that up a little bit to make sure it stands out against these images as well. And then we're gonna go to advanced size and spacing. And we're gonna set the margin top and bottom to eight to give these a little room to breathe. And then width and height, let's just do 16 pixels. Now you won't see this in the builder because in Oxygen we force containers to be at least 80 pixels high and wide. But on the front end, you'll see that these are actually 16 pixels. Uh, and then we're gonna go to advanced uh, borders. We're gonna set the border radius to 100% because we want them to be circles. 
And then for the border itself, let's just add a white uh, two pixel border like that. Now let's jump out to the front end. Since it auto sizes those, we wanna make sure it looks okay. Perfect, so that looks good. Now we can go over here and we can duplicate this. We need three of these. So we'll duplicate once, twice, perfect. And then we wanna add a little bit of a hover effect on these. So we're gonna to go to advanced and we need to select the state up here. So we're gonna to go to hover and we're going to uh, change the background color a bit when we hover them. Uh, maybe we'll make it less transparent like that. And then let's do uh, an effect here and we'll do a transform and we're gonna scale these. So we're gonna to go to scale and we'll do like a 1.3, 1.3. And we'll do a one for the Z scale because we don't care about that one. And then we need to go back to the original state here and go to uh, effects transition and make sure we have a transition duration here. I like to use ease dash in dash out for the timing function. So now if we hover these, you should see them change a bit. Now let's jump over to the front end to see uh, exactly what that's gonna look like. You can see it's a nice smooth transition. Now we click them, obviously nothing happens right now. So we're gonna fix that next. So for each of these, we're gonna need to change their uh, link URL to uh, the corresponding section anchor. Those are those anchors we set up in the JavaScript. So we're gonna do uh, hashtag first page. Then this one will be hashtag second page. And then this one will be hashtag third page. Now, if we save that and jump to the front end, we should see after a refresh here that these now work. And as you can see, our styling is being applied because of the CSS we created uh, in the code block and the function we're running when the section changes. So that's pretty much it for the functionality part. Now we just need to fix this vertical alignment. So we're gonna jump back over here and select the section class on one of these sections. And we'll go to advanced layout, set it to display flex, and then align items center and justify content center. Now let's take a look on the front end and see what that looks like. Perfect, so now we have our three sections. If we scroll with our mouse wheel, we're taken to each subsequent section. And we also have our navigation here with these uh, hover effects and it highlights the appropriate navigation link depending on which section you're in. All the code I used here will be available in the description of this video. For the most part, you're gonna be able to copy and paste that code in once you've set up the IDs, classes, and structure that I've shown you here. And then of course, you need to make sure uh, any ID references in the code are updated to the actual IDs of the elements you're using. So again, this is Elijah with the Oxygen team, and that's how to set up fullpage.js on your Oxygen site. Thank you for watching.